Hi there and welcome to January 2024's solar update. So in this video I'm going to go through my solar generation for the month, how much I exported, how much I used in the house and the costings and what I spent on gas and electric for the month. But before we get into the stats let's just remind ourselves of my solar panel system. Uh, so 14 Jinko 390 watt panels uh, totaling 5.4 kilowatts, 10 on the south and 4 on the east and a solar edge four kilowatt inverter. So that's the solar side. On the battery side, we've got the three kilowatt AC inverter and the eight kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. And then of course, I've got a few extra bits and bobs such as the My Energy Eddy heating the hot water, the Harvey and the Herb, and the Hypervolt EV charger. So for the month, 227.79 kilowatt hours for January. If we divide that by 31, that's 7.348 or 7.35 uh, kilowatt hours. So just underneath the 7.5 line going through. Uh, we had a few bad days. Second was under one kilowatt hour. And again on the 8th, 10th was 1.5. And then the 23rd was just under one kilowatt hour. But everything else was kind of above two and a half to five really we as you can see we had a really few good days as well together pairs together 14 14 15 15 15 and 15 and then the best day of the month was the 26th for me in the east was 16.861 kilowatt hours on the friday but otherwise not a bad month really i didn't really feel that it was a really terrible month um, the only downside was we didn't really have any saving sessions this month, only one to speak of, which was quite poor. I would have preferred a few more. So what does that look like compared to last year? Well, it's quite similar when you look at the bar chart. So last year in January um, 2023, we had 243 or 244, and then we had 227. So, you know, it's not bad. It's not a bad difference really what we're we really looking at about 17 kilowatt hours so that was one of the best days of the month really if you think about it 17 so if we had another one of those on one of the really bad days that would have made it exactly the same so all in all i think january's been pretty good so i'm expecting next month last year's february which was 347 to be the same this year if we've just had a little bit less in january than last year so these are the panels for the year so far in 2024. Uh, the 241 number is slightly higher um, than January because this is the 1st of February and it's quite sunny today. So it's added on like another 13 kilowatt hours onto it. But to, just to show you what the individual panels are up to, obviously the south side with the most on the south at the bottom here. And then the ones on the uh, east side with the four on the east. You know, they're doubled at the moment in the winter time, just to show you that, you know, they've been getting 10 kilowatt hours during, or well, they got 10 kilowatt hours each on the east side in January, but on the south, they got double that 20 kilowatt hours. Uh, don't be too worried about that because that's just really like a winter overview. If I bring you up the data for the full time, kind of two years nearly that I've had the whole system with the full totals, you'll see the numbers are a lot closer. So from the 11 megawatt hours that I've generated, each panel's been getting about 873 uh, on the south and about 720 on the east. So they are a lot closer uh, when it comes to the kind of summertime. So this is the My Energy Hub online. So we've got the Eddy from My Energy. Uh, we're using that to heat the hot water overnight on cheap rate on octopus intelligent so we've been basically using that every night i get that to come on at midnight until 5 30 in the morning and that usually heats the tank up and then i sort of add a little bit extra solar sometimes during the day just to top up the temperature after the morning showers ready for the evening showers so every day we've pretty much used it uh you'll see you should see sort of two spikes per day one big one for overnight and then a smaller one for during the day, as you can sort of see here on the 6th and the 7th. Uh, I don't know what happened on the 4th. Probably forgot to turn it on or something. Um, uh, but uh, there's a bit of a blank on the 4th. Maybe it was a data error or something like that. But in total, 164.9 kilowatt hours uh, were used by the Eddy, mainly overnight, as I said. But some of that would have been solar as well. So 
So for my electricity importing from the grid for the whole of January, I imported 499.5 kilowatt hours for the month. That's a mixture of off peak on uh, Octopus Intelligent and daytime rate as well. Hopefully we'll find out in a minute, mainly overnight at seven and a half P and not the day rate. Let's have a look at the daily numbers on that. Fairly consistent, I would say. Um, they might vary a little bit depending on how hot the shower was left before it heats up again. Um, depending on if my teenage son has run the run it dry with 200 litres of water coming out of it. Um, but otherwise, you know, we've been filling the battery up every night. Um, we've been running dishwashers overnight, washing machines overnight. Uh, if the hot water needed filling up, which it normally does a certain amount, that's been used for that as well and a tiny bit of car charging as well so it's fairly average i would say uh, if we look at some of these values 17 13 18 17 16 18 uh, 16 15 16 so something around the 15 16 17 kilowatt hours per day in electrical use so if you want to have a look at what i've exported for the month in january the total was 103.2 kilowatt hours that was roughly double what i exported in december so you can tell we've had a lot more sun in january than in december what does that look like daily well yeah up and down a lot depending on you know how sunny it was that day and how much we exported but as i say filling the battery up every night trying to do everything overnight so we get the full use of the 15p export during the day so we are now exporting as much as we possibly can uh, during the daytime so on to some numbers then uh, for january 2024 i usually look at the battery shortfall just to see if it's worth buying another battery it still doesn't make financial sense at the moment even though i do really want one as in February in 2024, we should see the VAT being removed from the sale of uh, second batteries and for battery installations. So hopefully we'll see the batteries drop in price by 20%, but we'll have to wait and see. At uh, this time, I normally look at the battery short for at 6 p.m. onwards till 11.30 p.m. when it gets cheaper, but I've had to drop it to 5 p.m. this time, um, mainly because what I'd done was if I knew the battery was going to fall short later on in the evening, I would actually pause the battery at 5 p.m. Um, and then unpause it at about 6 or 6.30 uh, for two reasons, really. Well, one, I knew it was going to fall short anyway. And another reason is if we'd have had some saving session days or more of them, it would have increased my baseline. So I would have got paid more for those saving session days because normally... The saving sessions are between 5 to 6 or 5.30 to 6.30, that sort of thing. So increasing your baseline and making use of electricity during those hours can increase your baseline, which means you'll be saving more, so get paying more, uh, So or paid more. So I actually used 17.35 kilowatt hours uh, during the month uh, at that peak rate, and that was £5.38. If I'd removed that one saving session day, well, it was only 2.23 kilowatt hours that I used on that or exported on that saving session day that I could have used myself. And uh, if I times that by the normal rate of 31 pence, it would have only saved me an extra 69 pence. So all in all, the battery shortfall or kind of thing really costed me about five pounds for January. Moving on to the import and export figures. So when I break apart the import figures, we used 476 kilowatt hours overnight at seven and a half pence. That equaled 35 pounds and 76. And daytime rate, we used 22 kilowatt hours at 31 pence, which equaled just over seven pounds. Now for the export of the month, we doubled our export this month. So 100 kilowatt hours at 15p equaled 15 pounds and 48 pence and saving session yes i said saving session and not saving sessions it was singular unfortunately there was only one in january oh dear 17th of january it was on and i managed to earn five pounds 54 pence by exporting uh and using a bit and gaining a bit of baseline there as well so that's all i had out of it 
So quickly on to the gas, 2nd of January to 1st of February. I read the meter and had a look at it today. That was 30 days. Used a massive 2,476 kilowatt hours at the new uh, increased price that was six pence. It's now seven pence uh, on the standard rate on Octopus. And it came to 181 pounds, quite a lot of money. But if you compare that to the Octopus gas tracker that I really want to be on, uh, that the average of that in the east of England over January uh, the average price was 4.22 pence per kilowatt hour. So, wow, what a difference. And if I'd have been on that, I would have only paid £104, saving me well over £70 a month. So it might happen again next month as well. But at last, I have had a date for my uh, electric meter to be plumbed or changed out for a dual band version in early March even though, you know, getting on to March, April probably will turn off the gas board. No, probably not. It probably won't be hot enough to turn off the gas board until about April, end of April. Um, so I might move over, have a look at the figures then. Uh, yeah, so we could have saved a lot more money, but hope, but we, as I say, we can't move over to it at the moment because the gas smart meter is not working. Standing charges, they just don't change. Um, gas was 27 pence a day by 31 days is £8.52. Electrics 40 pence or 42 pence a day for me times 31 days gives us 13 pounds and two pence. And then finally, 181 for the gas plus the standing charge gives us 189.52. And then for the electric, uh, 42 pounds and 79 pence was used altogether in electric plus the 13 pounds and two pence standing charge. But then we can subtract the £15.48 export and we can subtract the £5.54 earned from the savings session. Gives me a total for electric of £34.79. And if I add those gas and electric together, we get £224.31. But as you can see, most of it is on the gas side. Now, how does that compare to last month? I hear you not cry. Um, well, Last month in December, my gas, I only used £150, so £30 worth less. But, you know, the change in price had a little bit to do with that. Electric-wise, we actually used £53 in December and obviously used less, used £10 less in January. Um, the standing charge was the same uh, and we exported more. Instead of £7 in December, I exported £15 worth in January. But the biggie was that we earned 41 pounds from saving sessions in December, whereas we only earned five pounds in January. So the bill for all of the electric in December was only 17 pounds, but it nearly doubled uh, to 34 pounds in January, mainly because we tried to fight back, but there just weren't enough. Those saving sessions, you know, they really do make a big difference if you can earn money from them because we had six saving sessions in December compared to the one in January. And that's it for January. Solar generation was very similar to last year's January. Uh, so what's the big take from this month? Well, it seems to be that that big lack of saving sessions just really didn't help uh, me saving money this month. But again, you can't really rely on them because you never know when they're going to really happen. Uh, hopefully we'll still have a few more before the end of March. Um, and the gas has been a little bit more money as well, hasn't it? But the price has gone up. But there are savings to be had by possibly changing uh, your tariff as well, such as the Octopus Tracker tariff, if you're on a gas smart meter that works though. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a like. And don't forget to leave a comment with your solar generation facts and figures. Um, please subscribe to the channel as well if you're not a subscriber, as it really helps me out. And I'll see you soon.